Hello and uh, welcome to the program. On April 25th, the first smart road project was opened in Ukraine. It envisages the use of the Internet of Things technology in the road sector to ensure traffic safety. Now, this project aims to introduce intelligent transport systems using the latest telecommunication standards and as the prospect of becoming a full-fledged part of smart city. To talk more about this and the meeting between Ukraine and China recently, we are joined in the studio by Viktor Dovhan, Deputy Minister of Infrastructure of Ukraine for European Integration. Hello and thank you for joining us. Hello. So first, um, we're going to talk about the smart, road, smart city uh, and intelligent road project after. But first, uh, recently, so at the end of April, you attended the second international forum, One Belt, One Road, uh, in, in Beijing. What were the outcome of this uh, meeting? Uh, finally, we approved with Chinese ministries and Chinese Exim Bank the new loan agreement for 340 million US dollars. Uh, uh, for construction of the bridge near Kremenchuk across uh, Dnipro River. This is a new format of the agreement because uh, previously we attracted the Chinese investment at the rate approximately 7-8%. This will be 2 up to 3% uh, annually. So uh, the terms are similar. Uh, we work with the IBRD and European Investment Bank. So I think it's a great success. It took us almost um, two years from the development of the feasibility, MOU with Chinese company, uh, then ecological assessment, all these bureaucratic procedures. But I think we will manage it to, to sign the agreement within one month, then to have a tender, ratification in the parliament, and to start construction in September. What are the challenges of working with Chinese company, generally? Mm, first of all, differences in legislation because they don't have kind of procurement rules as we have it uh, in Ukraine based on the European Union uh, antitrust uh, legislation. Uh, difference in mentality because um, they need to, to know you to see you a couple of times mm -hmm. unless they will not work. Uh, they need to, you, you need to become the friends uh, with the Europeans or Americans you can do business. Uh, per email, per phone, personal meetings, it's rather an exception once in a while. Here it took us uh, every six months, so it was my fourth visit to China. And yeah, it took us, but uh, it means that uh, they pay attention to the importance of Ukraine as a country in the One Belt, One Road project. And they want to build infrastructure. They are highly interested. We have more than 20 construction companies registered in Ukraine. Some of them already won the tenders, as you know, in dredging mm -hmm. in the ports of Yuzhny and Odessa. Uh, then as well, the construction near Zhitomer, uh, Poltava region, uh, Khmelnytsky region. So uh, they want to enter the market. They want to bring new technology. They are cheaper than European companies, even cheaper than Turkish companies. Uh, sometimes they lack the quality, but we have the FIDIC rules, we have the strict standards of quality. And as far as it's not only monitored by Ukrainian road agencies projects, but as well by the banks, by the European banks. So these roads which were built um, with the financing of um, IFIs. They, they stand for five, uh, ten years. So is it so, <clears throat> sort of a test for further investment? And would you say that Ukraine will turn more towards Chinese investment in the future or will continue this you know, uh, common partnership with, with, with others? It's a very good signal because notwithstanding the political uh, um, uh, vulnerability in Ukraine, the results of the presidential elections, uh, they understand that Ukraine is on the path to the European Union. It's a normal Central Eastern European country. Uh, where we respect the, the and protect the foreign investor. And they want to invest, they want to build. Of course, uh, the strategy is, uh, first of all, to bring the uh, facilities, the loan money, and then to bring the investment. It's usually, it was done by, by, by other companies as well. Mm -hmm. But that's good investment and the good news for the people of uh, Kremenchuk, because they suffer because of the... Uh, Old bridge is overcrowded, uh, overloaded, full of trucks. Uh, you know that Kremenchuk region is a big industrial mm -hmm. region, and as well the Poltava region is um, uh, agricultural uh, center. So this is very important for the region, and very symbolic that this project, the first project with China, is a bridge project. which means like you know, connecting the nations. Uh, so I'm I'm pretty much. Um, uh, 
uh, optimistic and to think that it will be a big success. Uh, now, uh, on the downside, we saw in, uh, in the past that a certain um, behavior, I would say predatory behavior from China, and so I'm thinking about the Paris port, uh, some port in Sri Lanka where they loan money, where they build infrastructure, and in the end when the client can't pay, they say that basically it's, it's them and take the keys. How to ensure that this doesn't happen in Ukraine? No, first of all, it's it's uh, it's not correct to absolutely not correct to compare the developments uh, of Chinese investment in Africa, or in Asia, uh, or in Ukraine. Uh, we base our cooperation on the European Union rules. We have the basic association agreement. Uh, moreover, we participate in the EU-China connectivity platform, which connects uh, the TNT infrastructure network mm -hmm. of the European Union and the One Belt, One Road initiative. Uh, this um, uh, this, um, uh, this uh, platform was established uh, in the last November in Brussels, where active participation with the other uh, neighborhood countries. Uh, and we have the limits of IMF, uh, so it's impossible that we over overcome the limit and attract loans more that we can repay. Mm -hmm. Uh, moreover, we are quite, quite um, confident and quite uh, strict with the Chinese counterparts because, as you know, we have uh, we had previously negative project. The loan attracted for the Air Express connection between uh, International Airport Borispol and Kiev Central Railway Station. It was we terminated the loan, notwithstanding the some agreements uh, of the previous government. Uh, we repaid it back, and we want uh, we want um, that they repay our uh, our uh, insurance paid mm. to Sinusure Chinese companies. So quite big amount, big amount. It's uh, 37 million US dollars. So we are quite on the, on the same position. We are not begging the money. We attract a lot. We attract every every year billion in in euros from uh, European banks. Like to have the competition mm -hmm. because you know it's good to have the competition. You can bargain, let's say, uh, with the Europeans as well. We are interested to have the blended financing when, for instance, Chinese XM Bank and European Investment Bank goes together in one pool. It's as well interesting. We plan to do so uh, with the Airport Brisbane second runway. They have negotiations both with the European Investment Bank, Chinese XM Bank, and they target the good. Uh, uh, the good uh, terms and uh, and the banks in 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 Europe they as well they don't want to finance 100 percent mm -hmm. so they want co-financing from the local budget uh, local banks or from the state budget again it's good to to have mixed financing and uh, yeah so it's it's quite quite uh, look Ch China is different right now it's like when you work with Chinese now it's not the the the, the people coming to 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 I don't know to to do something improper with a bad mm -hmm. low quality. They are quite multinational companies based in uh, in uh, DC, in Brussels, in London. They are listed in uh, different Singapore stock, Hong Kong stock exchange. They uh, observe anti-corruption rules and they are quite, they speak English. Mm -hmm. They they behave like mm. uh, like normal companies. So you you would say that uh, the fact that the IMF is here and the EU is is here also kind of protects and creates that, that kind of models that protect from this be predatory behavior. Um, now that's for that's for China. Uh, I want us to focus a little bit on this project of so this smart road project uh, and this idea. There is this, this this project which aims to introduce quote intelligent transport system using the latest telecommunication telecommunication standards. Sorry. Can you tell us more about this project? It's a pilot. Uh, it's a new technology in the infrastructure. Uh, we have it, we have different partners. This uh, pilot was done with Nokia Solutions. Mm -hmm. um, um, it's good because it's in the concept of smart city, and you know that about 25 percent of our new nas national transport strategy is devoted to different IT solutions. First of all, we want to have it's much for the uh, road safety, because as you know, we have a big number of accidents in the roads and uh, quite um, high death um, uh, rate. Uh, this is pilot, just one. Then we, the second pilot is with the World Bank. We want to put the six um, IT systems 
uh, on the roads towards Kyiv. Mm -hmm. They will check the speed, uh, the, uh, the weight of the car, potentially they can be kind of uh, radiology control, some uh, accident control, whatever. But first of all, we focus on the, on the weight. Uh, because, as you know, we build the roads, but the overweighted trucks uh, with mm -hmm. the grain or scrap, uh, they're coming uh, towards ports, towards uh, western borders, and they ruin the roads. So the main issue is to establish the fair and efficient system of control mm -hmm. uh, to avoid such, um, uh, such things in the road, as you may saw in the news, the truck, 100, yeah, go, yeah, 100 crushing, tons yeah. uh, going mm. to the port of Odessa. It is not acceptable, mm -hmm. the policy of the ministry, so we will fight this. Now, uh, a more general question to conclude this interview. What are the challenges, uh, according to you, awaiting the ministry um, for 2019, for the year to come, the biggest ones? I mean, we, I don't see big challenges. We adopted, last year we adopted the strategies, um, this year is the second year when we have uh, road state road fund operational, uh, working just for the 75% of excise tax, uh, but it will be next year 2020, 100%. Mm -hmm. So we, where is the sustainable financing of the uh, construction? That's good. It means that the more and more good contractors are coming. They believe in uh, road project. They do, people of Ukraine as well, see new roads. Of course, not so many, but uh, uh, we need some time, at least five years, we'll connect with the good roads, all the uh, oblast centers uh, of Ukraine. We have good development in aviation. Today we reached, for instance, 50% growth of Lviv airport, comparing mm -hmm. to the same period of 2018. We target with the European Union on the signing of the Common Aviation Area Agreement, uh, but uh, as you see, the aviation sectors in Ukraine is the most active, the most uh, promising in the Europe. Uh, we want to, yesterday we approved the concept uh, strategy for development of the airport Brisbane till 2045 mm. and it means about 3.4 billion euros investing, uh, new terminals, new runways, office centers, facilities. So we are growing, uh, we expect uh, concessions uh, projects to be started in the ports of Ukraine. We hope that the railway was well will develop and the most uh, challenging may be issue to do the project on electric locomotives as they did last year with the GE on diesel ones. So a lot of plans, concrete plans, uh, we have action plan. Uh, I think notwithstanding different uh, uh, change of government uh, or the parliament, we know that we need to build the infrastructure of Ukraine and we will. Well, thank you for this overview. It was a pleasure to have you in the studio thank today. You. Uh, you. That was Viktor Dohan, Deputy Minister of Infrastructure of Ukraine for European Division. Thank you for watching the program and stay tuned for the rest.